tonight on The D Chicago. Ambitious best buddies. The brains and the brawn. Dream of becoming the bungalow kings of Chicago. The sky's the limit all across the city. They plan on starting their empire with two tiny homes. Placing our bets in these houses. The foundation is shot. But if they can't get it through their heads, that size really does matter. We don't want to overbuild. This has got to go. These wannabe bungalow kings, where did we end up on budget? Will never ascend the throne. How much of it we can save? Yeah, it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> been born in Ireland, but Sean Conlon was made in America. I have lived the American dream. He's built a fortune in the hard-nosed world of Chicago real estate. I came here with $500 in my pocket, and I worked as a janitor. I shoveled snow. I cleaned toilets. I did anything I needed to do to scratch out a living. At night, he started to sell real estate. After I got my first commission check, I realized I was never going back to my day job. And by age 26, he was one of the top earning brokers in America. I have bought, sold, and flipped billions of dollars of real estate. There's nothing more exhilarating than taking something that's tired and run down and breathing new life into it. Now, Sean's looking out for the next generation of developers. We need help. There's no crisis we can't handle. Investing his own money. So what's your ask? Two million dollars. And years of experience. We'll see how it should be done. To help them create great real estate. It's spectacular. Wow, this is beautiful. And their own success stories. You've helped me save this. Thank you. Right. This is The Deed Chicago. Thirty-year-olds Mike Big and Leave You Peter are best friends with a long history. We grew up uh, same Romanian community, same church, and we've just been hanging out ever since. Mike works for his dad's kitchen and bathroom remodeling business, and Leave You used to be in sales and marketing, but always wanted more. I left the corporate world, and that's kind of what started my passion for real estate. I'm the builder; he's the number guy. Not once to lack ambition. For their first project, they're flipping not one house but two. That's right, Mike and Levy bought bungalows just down the street from each other in the village of Forest Park. My wife and I bought one. One day Levy calls me and says, listen, I, I'm, I'm going to invest in some real estate. And I said, well, come and see what I bought. Turns out that when we're walking through my house, we noticed that the one two doors down was for sale. And so we put an offer in. Mike bought the first bungalow for $178,000. Meanwhile, Levy paid $145,000 for his. Then they had a eureka moment. So our goal is, once we finish these, to use that as our blueprint to go and do more of these across the city. Yeah, with Chicago having so many really old bungalows, the sky's the limit. We can do this all day. There are over 80,000 bungalows in the Chicago area, but ones in the city are expensive. So Mike and Leave You were smart to go to the suburbs to keep their investment low. I like Forest Park. It's less than 30 minutes from downtown, but still off most people's radar. It's an up-and-comer. And Mike and Leave You bought cheaply, so there's definitely money to be made. So, you've got two bungalows. Yeah, we've got this one, and then that one right down there. Okay. I like the street. I know that your neighbors, you've got a graveyard at the end of the street. <laughs> Very quiet. Not gonna bother you. Super quiet, except on election day, when they come out <laughs> to vote in Chicago, but otherwise, totally good. Otherwise, very good. All right, so what's your plan? The plan is to gut rehab both of them, top okay. to bottom, everything brand new, and then get them on the market, sell them as quickly okay. as we can. Mike, you have a construction business, so will you be the GC? Absolutely. And then leave you, what's your role in this? As we look to kind of do this more on a regular basis, is really fall into the role of acquisitions and looking for other properties for us to get in. Okay, so you guys are gonna build a team, partnership, and do this for Correct. a living? Big time. Absolutely. Okay. All right, let's take a look. Mike's yours first? Absolutely. My wife's inside. Let's go take a All quick right, let's peek. Let's do it. I go knock a few things out and I'll meet you guys up in All a right, bit. Let's do it. Hi, Sean. Adeline. Nice Adeline, to meet nice you. to meet you. Mike and Adeline have a classic Chicago bungalow. I've set foot in hundreds of these and they're all the same. Lots of small, cramped rooms on the first floor. So our plan is definitely to open up this whole area, starting with gutting this wall. This wall gets blown out, so you have a fully open living area here, correct? Okay, it's your kitchen. Obviously, these are going, right? Well, no, just kidding. Absolutely, we're <laughs> okay. absolutely gonna get these. There's nothing good about them. Stainless steel appliances? Yes. New hardwood floors? All the way through. Definitely. Throughout. 
This room back here, what do you intend to do back here then? The biggest struggle we have right now is determining whether we want to lose this bedroom in here. Well, I'd like to see if you can fit four bedrooms upstairs. Yeah. Do you think you can? One of the bedrooms would have to be smaller. You have to try and fit the four bedrooms in yeah. somewhere. Okay. Taking down that wall and relocating the fourth bedroom somewhere else will give Mike the open floor plan he wants, with the kitchen facing out to the dining area on one side and a living slash family room on the other. So back here then, this wonderful paneled room, what are you thinking? Originally, the idea was to turn this into a mudroom, but the foundation is shot. I'm feeling the tilt in the floor yeah, here. Definitely. Yeah, so to redo the surface and yeah. to rebuild it, yeah. too much way out of our budget. Okay. We don't want to overbuild. It would be best if we blew this out and made a deck. I like it. All right, let's take a look upstairs. The second floor of these pre-war bungalows were built solely for storage. But sometime in the 70s, this was remodeled, and three bedrooms and a bathroom were retrofitted in the attic space. Ashan, wash your head as you get in here. I'm not the tallest guy around, but I would say these are pretty low ceilings, right? Absolutely. There are two ways to deal with the top story of these bungalows. Dormering, which is squaring off the area to make more room on the side, or popping up, which is adding a full height second floor. Mike's house is already dormered, so there's only one way to go. I think popping the top would be ideal, fixing okay. the height issue. How high are you going to get the ceilings with a pop up here, do you think? So we're definitely going to have eight feet. The key would be to try and figure out four bedrooms up here. Originally, when we were talking about doing this layout, we kind of yeah. liked the idea of keeping three here just so we don't blow that budget. But if we really want to get the top dollar in the yeah. neighborhood, I think your idea of four bedrooms, that's, that's a key yeah, to making so. sure we can get it. Looking at the square footage of the top floor, the space is tight. There's only enough room for three good-sized bedrooms. If we did four, they'd just be too tiny. But less bedrooms means a lower asking price, less profit, and more risk. Maybe we can go and see the basement. So what's the plan down here? Big open space. My idea was to take these mechanicals, yes. throw them into the corner, kind of isolate yeah. them, make sure that they're not taking up valuable real estate. I would do that. Keeping the laundry here. So you're finishing this out fully, right? Yes. What about putting your fourth bedroom down here? So then you could have a bedroom bathroom here. Right, so now you have your fourth bedroom. It's maybe an in-law suite. Yep. And then you have this open area, put a big couch down here, television, kids play down here or whatever. Definitely. Now that you mention it, that is actually a pretty good idea. It definitely fits within our budget. Okay. You know, throwing up some two by fours. We gotta finish the place anywhere. So that's Mike's house sorted, but there's still the matter of leave use bungalow, which is just steps away. So how did you find this house? I saw what Mike paid for his uh, just a few weeks ago, and the fact that this came up substantially under that, I decided to jump right on it. I paid the 145000 cash. So you bought yours for less? I bought mine for less, I did. Sounds like a little gloating there. Yeah, just a little bit. OK. Well, the good news is the general contractor will get all that money back from <laughs> you. They know how to load it back in with their fees. <laughs> OK, so is the plan to do the houses together? We definitely have a lot of subcontractors and crews that we can balance between both houses. Okay. So when one trade does a house here, another trade will do the house here, and then we can kind of swap okay. them back and forth. That makes good sense. And it could potentially make us more money too. By sharing crews, materials, and delivery costs, and doing the work themselves, Mike and Leave You could save up to 10% of the overall budget costs than if they did the homes individually. So obviously new kitchen. Yep. I'm thinking of, you know, some, some nice shaker-style cabinets, either quartz or granite, the diamond in the rough, right? So we just got to make it shine. I see a lot of potential in the views place, especially since it's larger than Mike's and was cheaper out of the gate. See, at least somebody held the ladder for you. You can afford to fall, you own it. <laughs> there is one thing they have in common, though, and it is the cramped second floor. This obviously is aggressively Low, right? Right. What are you thinking? Right, so I think the initial plan is to dormer this side of the house. Okay. Plan, get a bathroom up here. Your reason for dormering? The cost, the efficiency between going up or, or kind of just doing a dormer. So if you pop up though, what does it cost you? So if I pop up, it's about 40 versus 25. I mean, this, is, this, has, gotta, this has gotta go. Leview is not thinking big picture. Instead of trying to keep 15 grand in his pocket, he should bite the bullet, spend the extra money, and build a proper second floor like Mike. If I'm going to do a deal with these guys, this is something we're going to have to revisit. So what's your long-term goal, guys? 
Well, I'd like to, you know, prove to my, my dad, and I gotta show that I know what I'm doing, that I'm capable, and wanna do this full time. Leave you, what about you? So I had 10 years of corporate America, um, doing the corporate rat race, and I figured I've gotta try to do something for myself. 